See that little thing over there? An angel, isn't she? You might recognize her. That's Miss Daisy May. She's kind of a big deal on my Instagram. <laughs> uh, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about my journey and about some major events that happened in my life that shaped me and shaped my business and something that I'm really grateful for and how I turned a crappy situation into the best thing ever. Um, if you guys follow Tony Robbins at all, he has this saying that he believes, you know, things happen for you and not to you. And I want to share my little story and why I 100% believe that's true. So let me just take you down my road of photography. If you don't know, if you haven't been following me, um, I've been a photographer for 10 years now. I had always had a love for photography. I remember when I was in high school, I had those little disposable cameras and me and my girlfriends would go take pictures in our prom dresses, play dress up, thought we were models, it was awesome. Uh, I became a hairdresser for eight years, did that. Uh, my husband was in the military, we moved around. And uh, when we were stationed in Washington State, we were at Joint Base Loose McCord, and I had my first baby there, Amaya. And I remember just falling in love with photography all over again. Um, I had been doing hair for so long, but it was just such a fun, like, breath of fresh air getting into photography again. I loved documenting all the little things with my child, with Amaya, you know, her first crawl, her first walk, you know, her little itty bitty baby toes, her tiny little patch of hair on top of her head. And like a lot of moms do, we just, we fall in love with capturing those every little moments because it is crazy how fast those kids grow up. I mean, I have a, I have a six and a nine year old now and where'd that time go? Like, boom, it just disappeared on me. So, I started out, like I said, like any other mo young mom does usually, me a mom photographer, you know, documenting everything. And it first started out as just a hobby. I was just trying to learn everything I possibly could online. I was 100% self-taught. Um, and after, you know, about six months of playing photography, I ended up having, you know, some people say like, hey, you know, we'll pay you to take pictures of our kids. And I was like, I never even thought about turning it into a business. Like, heck yeah, like this is awesome. Doing something I love and getting paid for it, great. So for the next uh, four, six years, I did mostly families and kids and newborns. Um, basically, I did anything. If you wanted to pay me, I'd do it. Like I shot weddings. Um, for a while there, I thought I was going to specialize in newborns. I mean, you name it, I was doing it. And it was a great learning experience, you know, shooting all different genres. Um, and in 2014, we moved to Denver, Colorado, and it was time for me to start my business all over again. And at the time, I still had young kids. Amaya was three. I had my second just before we moved, and she was only like six months old. So I wasn't in too big of a hurry to build a business in Colorado anyways. Um, you know, I'm like, you know, once the kids go off to school, maybe I'll focus on it more. But for now, it's just fun. I'll do it on the side. And my realtor actually jump-started my business for me. Um, if you guys ever need to get into networking, if you move, hit up your realtor because it is amazing how many people they know. Their network um, is huge, you guys. And so I have to thank my realtor for basically jump-starting everything for me. Um, you hear my dog coming down the stairs. <laughs> and so... From there, you know, I was shooting mostly just evenings and weekends, and after about, let's see, so that was 2014, in 2016, I started to get the bug, started to get the itch that there was something missing. Like, I loved photography, but I there was some passion that was just not burning for me anymore. I was kind of burnt out, you know, I was gone, you know, weeknights and weekends. Like, that's my family time, that's when my husband was around, and... Um, he actually ended up getting out of the, the Air Force. He's medically discharged and, um, he was working a sales job and I was starting to think, you know, about the future and about where I want to take my business. So I'm going to continue to do photography. And I'd always loved Sue Bryce. Uh, I'm sure you guys know who she is. She's an amazing, amazing portrait photographer. And I'm like, wow, you know, she just works with women and she gives them confidence. She makes them feel beautiful. It's like playing adult dress up. Like, that's what I want. Like, I miss those days of doing hair and turning my client around the chair and just the confidence, the smile they'd have on their face, walking out the door with their brand new hair. Um, 
I just miss that passion of working with women. And just kind of a side note, like I have that passion because I was bullied as a child. I never felt pretty. I never felt good enough. So I feel like it's been my mission in life to give back to women and to get women to feel as beautiful as they possibly can. They, they deserve that confidence. Um, so I started, you know, thinking like, I think I just need to start over. I think I need to go back to my roots of working with women where I always thought I was meant to be. And so I did something crazy. I started, um, well, I stopped taking my family clients and my kid clients and my newborn clients. And it was really hard at first because, you know, I'd watch their kids grow up for a few years and it's just sad to all of a sudden say, sorry, I'm not doing this anymore. Um, but so, yeah, so I stopped taking families, kids, newborns, and I was like, I'm, I'm just going to focus on female portraiture. And what that meant was I wanted to do, uh, you know, maternity. I was going to do glamour, headshots, just anything that was female oriented. And at the time, I didn't even really think of boudoir, uh, which is kind of funny. Um, so what I had to basically do was I had to build a portfolio. So I started out, you know, I dropped my prices. I did a lot of concept shoots and style shoots for fun just to get, you know, my portfolio going and to show people what I could do. Um, and after about six months of portfolio building, I started getting women asking me if I'd shoot boudoir and little did I know, I kind of fell in love with it. So I ended up opening an in-home studio. Uh, I basically started taking over my entire house. I started in my front entryway. I took over my dining room. Uh, one of my most famous like shots of people I always ask for is I have this, um, image of this girl, blonde hair, pink bodysuit, pink wings with smoke that was shot in my dining room. Um, I took over my living room and I took over my loft. I took over every room I possibly could in my house just to make more space for shooting because I loved it so much. And in 2017, uh, my kids were getting ready to uh, both be in school full time. And I started thinking about, you know, what's next for my business and where do I want to take this? And I just, I really wanted to move my studio out of my house. I really wanted to move into a commercial space. Um, for some reason, it just made me feel like I was making it. You know, if I had my own external studio, like I've done it. And at the time, I will say I went into this with a completely wrong mindset. You know, I was like, well, I want to open a studio. It's really scary, but you know, you just got to pay your bills. You just got to pay your expenses and you'll be fine. You'll be fine. So I remember talking it over with my husband and he was definitely very nervous about me doing this. You know, this is a long commitment and what if we want to move back to Minnesota or, you know, what if this happens? What if that happens? And um, he definitely threw some good questions in there. And uh, I'll never forget, there was one day my father-in-law came over and I love my father-in-law. He's great. He's a smart guy. And I know he did this out of care. Um, but I remember him just grilling me about this studio idea. You know, he's like, are you sure this is a good idea? Uh, you have got the clients for it. Are you busy enough for it? You make enough money for it? You know, what if this happens? What if that happens? Like, this is a huge commitment. Have you thought about this? And while they were all really good valid points that I needed to think about it, I couldn't help but feel almost like he was doubting me. Like, uh, that's a great idea, but maybe it's not the time. Maybe you should just hold off a little bit and... Um, and that did affect me. And I, for a while, I was like, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I shouldn't do this. Um, especially because I started touring, uh, retail spaces and they were so expensive. I had no idea because the, the Denver housing market is so expensive here. And I had no idea that the retailer, the commercial aspect was just as expensive, if not more. And I had no idea that you, they basically look for a longer term lease. So if you sign a lease, they want like a three, four, five, six year lease. Um, basically the longer lease you sign, the better deal you can get too. So here I was thinking originally like, oh, I'll just, I'll just get a studio for like a year. If it doesn't work, whatever, I'll go back to in home. Like I can make it work for a year. Well, I didn't realize that that's not really an option. I mean, you are lucky if you can find a beautiful space with a landlord that's willing to let you lease for a year take it because that's something that you can't find. Um, so I did find a space and it wasn't even my ideal space. It wasn't my dream space, but it was enough space. And they were willing to uh, help me remodel a little bit. And they still wanted me to sign a four year lease. And it terrified me. I, there were so many nights that I went to bed and I was like, oh my gosh, four years. That's a long time. Like, how old are my kids going to be when that's over? Like, what if, what if my business does tank? What if we do want to move? Like, what happens? And I did let the fear sink in a little bit, but then there's this fire inside of me that's like, no, 
no, well, I'm going to make it work. We'll make it work. You know, there's if, where there's a will, there's a way. I Whatever. Like, I got this. We're going to do this. So with a little hesitation from my husband, he finally said, all right, I support you. If you think you can do this, you know, go for it. So the spring of 2018, I opened my first studio in Denver. And not even three months after I opened the studio, my husband got the phone call that he was being laid off. And like I said before, when I had this idea in my head to open the studio, I went in with the mindset of, I just need to pay my bills. I just need to pay the rent. I don't, I don't really need to make money. Like that's great if I can, but I don't need to. And so I was in big trouble. I went from not only having to pay my studio expenses to having to pay a mortgage, to having to pay car loan, to have car insurance, food. I mean, anything, everything was now on me. And it came with little to no warning. I think that we had a month before he was laid off where, and I didn't know if he was going to find another job. I mean, I can't rely on him to get work. I, you know, it's all on me for now. Like he's going to rely on me. So in that time, right after he was laid off, I ended up having lots of medical issues and I was in and out of the hospital and I had all these really expensive tests going on. And of course, being a small business owner, I didn't have health insurance. So I had to pay out of pocket for everything. Went into a lot of credit card debt. Uh, shortly after that, we had car trouble. I can't remember exactly what it was. It was probably a couple thousand dollars. We went back to Minnesota for a quick little visit and we brought our dog with and he decided to go run off and chase a squirrel. And, uh, as he was chasing the squirrel, he basically broke his leg and needed a complete knee re reconstruction surgery and, uh, $4,000, $4,000 to fix his leg. And he was a young dog. He was like four at the time. So we had to do it. So yeah, so I went from being laid off, health bills, carb, car bills, my dog getting injured. Then I got a letter in the mail from my HOA, my homeowners association. So nice saying, you know, you got to paint your house or we're going to start finding you. I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Like, what else do I have to pay for? Like, I can't do this. Like, I can't. So I, you know, start researching how much it costs to paint a house because I have no idea. I've never had to do it before. I'm getting quotes of like four to five thousand dollars, and I'm like, oh my gosh, why, why am I keep, why do I keep getting kicked? Like I'm already down. Like you can't kick me any farther. Like, oh my gosh, like I have tears in my eyes just thinking about the stress and like the sleepless nights and like what next? What next? Like I'm just being set up for failure. How am I going to make this work? And on top of it, Christmas was around the corner, and I was going to have to provide for my kids a wonderful Christmas and. I was terrified, terrified of how I was going to make this work. And you know what, you guys, I could have walked away. I could have gone bankrupt and said, I give up. I surrender. I can't do this. I tried. Or I could take the situation and say, F it. Excuse my language, but I'm not letting this bring me down. Nope. 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 I am not going down this way. I'm going to fight for my family. I'm going to fight for my business. I'm going to find a way to make this work. And you guys, I did. I did. It was a hard, hard year. I'm not going to lie. There was a lot of sacrifices, a lot of lessons learned. And I'll say that the years prior to me opening up my studio, I was actually claiming losses. Um, I was buying so many props. I was writing off everything I possibly could. I was basically paying my clients to take their picture at the end of the day. Like my time wasn't even worth nothing. I was just doing it for fun. And that first year at the studio, like I said, if I went in with that same mindset of like, I just need to cover my expenses. I'll be fine. Like if I make money, great, whatever. And I had to change that. I had to change that thinking a hundred percent. And I don't know why, but I used to think that maybe like, you know, charging, doing something you love was wrong. Like I felt guilty for taking people's money. But then I learned, I'm like, no, like that is so messed up. Like I need to be charging for this. Like I need to provide for my family. Why not me? Why can't I make money doing this? Like this is the perfect situation. Do something you love and make money. Oh my gosh, what a concept. <laughs> so uh, that first year I opened the studio, I went to a, uh, like I said, I went from a loss to $75,000 in sales. And um, the next year, you know, I was like writing goals down and, you know, trying to give myself something better to achieve because $75,000 at the end of the year, like I looked at that and I'm like, holy crap, I did that. I went from a loss to $75,000. 
If I can do that, what else can I do? I'm going to try even harder. Oh, she's back. <laughs> but so then my goal for 2019 was like, well, I'd be, oh my gosh, can you imagine making six figures doing this? I, that would just like blow my mind. Like that'd be like my biggest goal in life. Like, oh my gosh, I, not goal in life, but financial goal. Um, that would be amazing to reach six figures. So I'm like, I'm going to go full force in. We're going to get six figures this year. And by June of 2019, I had hit that. And I still had six months to go. And I just remember sitting there, you know, looking at my bank account, just going like, wow. Wow, if I knew what I knew years ago, oh, can you imagine where I would be financially? And I finished up that year at $230,000, which I am so grateful for. I don't take a penny of that for granted. That was hard, hard, hard work and dedication and perseverance. And like I said, all these horrible, horrible things happened for me, not to me. I think back to where, what my life would have been like if I didn't take this risk, if I would have just stayed a, you know, part-time photographer shooting on the side here and there from my house and my husband got laid off. I don't I mean, I probably would have hustled a little bit more of photography, but not like I did. And you guys, those entire two years that I was trying to build my business, my husband was still unemployed. He couldn't find a job. It's still on me. So it's not like he came in and, and started making money too. I mean, it was still a really hard two years knowing that everything was on me and thank the Lord, he's finally got a job, but I just never want to have to rely on him for that. Like, that's not fair. Um, you know, like, why can't I support the family as well? So I just want to share with you guys that if you have a dream and a passion, it can, it, you can make wonderful money doing it and don't feel guilty about it. Your family deserves it. You deserve to have a wonderful life. You deserve to be able to afford to go on vacations and give back. Like, I love being able to give back to charities and do things that I normally wouldn't have done before because I didn't have the money. Um, so there's so much I want to teach you guys. I... <sighs> I look back over 10 years, the amount of lessons I've learned. Oh my gosh, I've learned so many. And if I if I could clone myself and send myself back in time and teach myself all the things I know now, oh my gosh, it would change my life. It would be amazing to save 10 years of knowledge shoved into just a little mentorship. And that's what I want to do for you guys. I want to save you guys time. I don't want to put you guys or set you guys up, you know, in a failure situation. I want to set you up for a success and show you guys the way not to go and the way to go. Um, so yeah, I'm just really passionate about it. Like you said, I, I've always been so passionate about giving back and giving people confidence and whether it's confidence in yourself and your body, um, or just confidence in your business, which has now been so passionate for me. Like I said, it rocked my world. What happened to me has completely changed me for life. And now I just, I want to give back, give my story to everybody and inspire you guys not to give up on yourselves and that anything is doable when you have the right mindset. So that's my story. And I cannot wait to share more of it with you and Daisy me. Oh my gosh, she's so precious, isn't she? <laughs>